video is the introduction to landscapes. When creating a painting of a landscape, you'll need to utilize space as an element of art. So there's a few things you need to know. We aim to create an illusion of space when we paint and draw landscapes. Where we place things on our page can help us be successful. There are many different strategies to create an illusion of space in visual arts. So you'll have a lot of different choices in how to do this. One strategy is positive and negative space. Typically the subject is positive and the background would be negative. In this example, the buildings are positive and the sky is negative. Space also includes foreground, middle ground, and background. It also includes perspective. This is how we see the world. This helps create an illusion of depth. As objects get further away from the viewer, they get smaller. Again, this is an illusion of space. In overlapping, far objects go behind and close objects come in front. Notice what's overlapping. Small objects can sometimes appear bigger than large objects depending on where they are placed on the page. We have shading or value. There could be dark, medium, and light. Again, this helps create the illusion of space through shadows and the use of a light source. We have size, where far objects are smaller and close objects are bigger. Here's another example of this, and another in an actual watercolor painting. For surface, look at the position of the posts. Far objects are higher on the page, close objects are lower on the page. Foreshortening is when far objects converge and come together, and close objects converge and move apart. Notice the fence. Density is where far objects are blurry and have little detail, and objects that are closer are more in focus, and we can typically see more detail. Value and focus. Notice what happens as the trees go back in space. The ones closer are darker, more detail, and they fade as they go back. Atmospheric perspective is the effect of taking on the atmosphere. So this is a great example with these mountains going back in space. Finally, cool versus warm. In perspective, warmer colors come forward and cool colors recede or go back in space. Some colors are warmer and some are cooler. For example, blue is cooler than red. However, colors within themselves, say red for example, could lean warm or cool. Cool reds may have a little blue in them and warm reds may have a little bit of yellow in them. This is a great example on the left. Notice the reds in the foreground come forward and the blues in the background push back and we see some atmospheric perspective as well.